You have said here that um, you have never protected any priest accused of abusing a minor. Um, why did you leave Father Fabian Mariansky in ministry for more than five years despite an allegation of statutory rape when the victim was 16 years old? Father <clears throat> Mariansky's case was handled by one of my predecessors uh, years before I came. We're talking about you now. I know that. Let me answer the question, please. Okay? And so Mariansky was sent off for evaluation and treatment, which at that time said he could be re returned to ministry. We would never do that now. So I just wasn't aware of all this that had happened before I arrived. But her case was in the black binder that Mr. Connors prepared for you. So did you not read that binder when you became bishop? I read through it. A lot of the priests in there were already removed from ministry, as you know. But you let him minister for five years. Why? He was out for five years. The whole time that you have been here as bishop, he has been in a church until the day the story was in the news. Why? Because that's when we discovered, just recently this spring, when I discovered that we had this new letter from the young woman who was making the complaint. Father Dennis Ryder is alleged to have molested not one, not two, but three minors. You, sus you suspended him, put him back, uh, into ministry earlier this year before all of the victims were even interviewed. Why? I don't want to hear from Terry. I want to hear from you. You're going to have to hear from my attorneys. I've been dealing with so many of these cases, Charlie, that the details in my weary brain seriously get mixed up. Can you comment? On no, 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 I don't want to hear. Who runs this diocese? Is it you or is it Terry and Lawler? It is I, but I rely heavily upon those who advise me on the details of these cases. Well, you can see here that every time we try asking the bishop, really nailing down into specifics, he turns around to the committee of men and women around him to see if they can answer it for him. Uh, one of his attorneys said something to the effect of, well, there's been some bad decisions over the last couple months. We're not perfect. I did get a text message from a victim reacting to that. This victim said, these are not bad decisions. These are crimes. Why not call the police? They need to stop saying it's a bad decision. It makes it sound like, oh, we just made a mistake. Forgive us. What about the children who have been abused that have not come forward? Because all the research suggests it usually takes 30 or 40 years for most people to say anything about sexual abuse. So the whole idea that there's no abuse occurring in the church today, that may be true, of course, but we probably won't know until 20 or 30 years from now. You were getting text messages real time during that news conference from victims. What was the overall tone from those victims? Extreme disappointment. This seemed to be, this is probably the fourth news conference they've held since March, and it was kind of like people were expecting, let's, let's ask some questions, let's hear some answers from the bishop, really nail down into specifics. Instead, what they got was an hour-long arcane presentation about the ins and outs of the church bureaucracy when it comes to the sexual abuse crisis. Then finally, we were able to ask him some questions, but only a few before he was whisked away.